The breaking waves dashed high on a stern and rock-bound coast. And the woods against a stormy sky, their giant branches tossed. And the heavy night hung dark, the hills and waters o'er. When a band of exiles moored their bark on a wild New England shore. Not as a you are listening to the voice of Agnes Moorhead reading The Landing of the Pilgrims by Felicia Hemans. A page from our special Thanksgiving Day edition of Anthology. This is Fleetwood. Every Sunday evening at 6.30, WRCA, in cooperation with the Poetry Center of the YM and YWHA, 92nd Street and Lexington Avenue in Manhattan, brings you Anthology, a selection of readings from poets, past and present, and the music to accompany their poetry. This Sunday, Poetry for Thanksgiving. Our guests, by transcription, Agnes Moorhead, the Fred Waring Glee Club, and the New England Conservatory Alumni Chorus, James Pease, baritone soloist. Since Thanksgiving is a season of reunion, a season when we give thanks for the bounty of our table, the peace and comfort of our home, We'd like to open today's program with Lydia Maria Child's beloved Thanksgiving Day. Or perhaps you remember the poem from your school days by the more familiar opening lines, Over the river and through the woods to grandfather's house we'll go. The poem has been expanded by Frank Kunkel for the special holiday recording you'll hear. The music is by Harry Simeon. And so, if you'll join us, Fred Waring and the Pennsylvanians are waiting outside in the sleigh. <laughs> Now and our heads all are 
grandfather speaks to the Lord. Our Father, we thank Thee for Thy bounteous goodness and Thy generous blessing. been quite a few changes since those days, since the era of the sleigh, mittened hands, frost blue noses. Yesterday, the Thanksgiving Day dinner required weeks of preparation. Today, in this age of streamlined cookery, it's only a matter of minutes from the deep freeze to the dining room table. Many old Thanksgiving Day traditions have been stored away upstairs in the attic or between the pages of the family album. 
all the warm, casual little customs remembered only by the very old. Yes, much of the tradition of the holiday has been lost down through the years, but one story will never be forgotten. The story of the pilgrims who were the first to celebrate this happy holiday. We'd like to tell their story again for you today. The story of Thanksgiving. The Mayflower set sail from Southampton, England on August 5, 1609. She was a small, badly equipped vessel of 180 tons. There were 90 people aboard and 30 more aboard a smaller vessel, the Speedwell. The Speedwell, however, proved unseaworthy, and after twice putting back for repairs, 12 of her passengers were crowded into the Mayflower, which finally, on September 6, turned her prow to the west and disappeared into the gray veils of a rain-washed dawn. For the men and women aboard that tiny vessel, it seemed that time stood still. The minutes, the hours, the days dissolved into the creak of the rigging, the constant slap of the waves against the sides of the Mayflower, the harsh sound of the wind. Time was the sick child lying with her head in her mother's lap. Time was a bowl of cold, unappetizing porridge. Time was a body sewed in a rough piece of canvas, slid down a pine plank into the darkness of the sea. It was nine weeks later, on November 19th, before the nightmare ended, before land was sighted, nine weeks of fear and anguish and suffering, of praying for a landing. The breaking waves dashed high on a stern and rock-bound coast. And the woods against the stormy sky, their giant branches tossed. And the heavy night hung dark, the hills and waters o'er. When a band of exiles moored their bark on a wild New England shore. Not as the conqueror comes, they the true-hearted came. Not with the roll of stirring drums and the trumpets that sing of fame. Not as the flying comes, in silence and in fear. They shook the depths of the desert's gloom with their hymns of lofty cheer. Amidst the storm they sang, and the stars heard, and the sea, and the sounding aisles of the dim woods rang to the anthem of the free. The ocean eagle soared from his nest by the white wave foam, and the rocking pines of the forest roared. This was their welcome home. There were men with hoary hair amidst that pilgrim band. Why had they come to wither there, away from their childhood land? There was woman's fearless eye lit by her deep love and truth. There was manhood's brow serenely high and the fiery heart of youth. What thought they thus afar? Bright jewels of the mind, the wealth of sea, the spoils of war. They sought a faith pure shrine. I call it holy ground. The soil where first they trod, they left unstained what there they found, freedom to worship God.
It was on Saturday, November 21st, that the Mayflower dropped anchor in what is now the harbor of Provincetown. A party was put ashore to explore the neighboring shore to search for a suitable place for the settlement. And on Monday, December 21st, Plymouth Harbor was selected. Four months later, when the little colony had struggled through its first terrible winter, an Indian came into the hamlet and in broken English welcomed the strangers. He said his name was Samoset, that he came from Unhegan, five days' journey to the southeast, and that he was an envoy from the greatest commander in the country, a sachem named Massoit. Massoit himself appeared a few days later, and a treaty, offensive and defensive, was signed, which remained in force for 54 years. The pilgrims set about planting their fields as soon as spring came, and the harvest proved a good one. Governor William Bradford, delighted by the success of the colony and the rich harvest, called a meeting of the elders to propose a festival. And now, said the governor, gazing abroad on the piled-up store of the sheaves that dotted the clearings and covered the meadows o'er, "'Tis meet that we render praises because of this yield of grain. "'Tis meet that the Lord of the harvest be thanked for his sun and rain. "'And therefore I, William Bradford, by the grace of God today and the franchise of this good people, "'governor of Plymouth, say, through virtue of vested power, "'ye shall gather with one accord.' and hold in the month of November thanksgiving unto the Lord. He hath granted us peace and plenty, and the quiet we've sought so long. He hath thwarted the wily savage, and kept him from rack and wrong. And unto our feast the sachem shall be bidden, that he may know we worship his own great spirit, who maketh the harvests grow. So shoulder your matchlocks, masters, there is hunting of all degrees. And fishermen, take your tackle, and scour for spoil the seas. And maidens and dames of Plymouth, your delicate crafts employ to honor our first thanksgiving and make it a feast of joy. We fail of the fruits and dainties. We fail of the old home cheer. Ah, these are the lightest losses may have that befall us here. But see in our open clearings how golden the melons lie. Enrich them with sweets and spices and give us the pumpkin pie. So bravely the preparations went on for the autumn feast. The deer and the bear were slaughtered. Wild game from the great to least was heaped in the colony cabins. Brown home brew served for wine, and the plum and the grape of the forest for orange and peach and pine. At length came the day appointed. The snow had begun to fall. But the clang from the meeting house belfry rang merrily over all and summoned the folk of Plymouth who hastened with glad accord to listen to Elder Brewster as he fervently thanked the Lord. In his seat sat Governor Bradford, men, matrons, and maidens fair. Miles Standish and all his soldiers with corselet and sword were there. And sobbing and tears and gladness had each in its turn the sway, for the grave of sweet Rose Standish o'ershadowed Thanksgiving Day. And when Massasoit the Sachem sat down with his hundred braves, and ate of the varied riches of gardens and woods and waves, and looked on the granaried harvest. With a blow on his brawny chest, he muttered, The good great spirit loves his white children best. The Landing of the Pilgrim Fathers, read by the distinguished Hollywood star, Miss Agnes Moorhead and the poem, The First Thanksgiving, by Margaret Junkin Preston. The earliest poetry came to America with the Pilgrims as the Ainsworth Psalter. Henry Ainsworth, a member of the Pilgrim sect, fled from England to Amsterdam in 1593. A learned biblical scholar and teacher, he translated the Psalms from the Hebrew and then turned his translations into verse, form which he set to music. This work, called the Book of Psalms, became known as the Ainsworth Psalter and served as the religious music of the pilgrims for many, many years. The pilgrims sang in unison and without accompaniment. They believed, as did John Calvin, 
that the sole purpose of sacred music was the worship of God, and that organ music was a distraction from the prime purpose. From the Ainsworth Psalter, we'll hear three psalms for the Thanksgiving season. Psalm 23, Jehovah feedeth me, I do not lack. Psalm 34, in all time, bless the Lord. And Psalm 100, show to Jehovah all the earth. They will be sung by the New England Conservatory Alumni Chorus, conducted by Lorna Cook de Varon, James Pease, baritone soloist. Jehovah feedeth me, I shall not lack. In crafty forty, thou wilt make me light. He can't believe thee, why
number 38, dated Sunday, November 21st. Next week, Poetry and the Dance. Our guest will be Walter Sorrell of Dance Magazine. And as an added highlight, we'll present Mr. Sorrell's original verse narrative, Isadora Duncan, starring Miss Sidney Smith. Anthology is brought to you by WRCA, in cooperation with the Poetry Center of the YM and YWHA, 92nd Street and Lexington Avenue in Manhattan. John Malcolm Brennan, Director. Next Sunday, at the Teresa L. Kaufman Auditorium, the Poetry Center will present E.E. E. Cummings, the indomitable enfant terrible of American poetry, reading from his prose and poetry. Remember the date? Sunday, November 28th. E.E. E. Cummings at the Poetry Center. Anthology is produced by Steve White, written and directed for WRCA by Draper Lewis. Until next Sunday, this is Fleetwood wishing you good luck and good reading. Thank you.